Good morning, good afternoon. It's Black Bright and it's really difficult doing these videos because you have to be so careful about what you say, how you say things and as much as you want to be free in what you say you really have to understand that you have a responsible responsibility in these kind of forums. And so what I tend to do is I tend to select um, what I feel is beneficial for people who I feel are disadvantaged and who could who could benefit from the information I share in the videos. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about um, a community charter. Community charter, well a charter is like a set of rules that is supposed to um, create some kind of structure, balance, organisation for any group of people, usually it's done for companies. Now, I was listening to um, somebody called Boyce Watkins today, and he was in an interview with Dr. Claude Anderson. And they were talking about the Black Code, and the Black Code is supposed to be uh, a system whereby um, the community, they follow a set of rules, they have a code of conduct. It's a bit, they, they call it a bit, they, they made the analogy of the mafia and they made analogy of organizations and um, how people, that's how, you know, the Asian community, they work with a code of conduct or code of etiquette. And it's something that black people don't have. And that is why black people don't pull together. But when he was talking about black people not pulling together, I thought to myself, well, when you think about a rave, you see plenty of black people pulling together. I mean, I went to a rave um, over the Easter weekend and the place was absolutely packed. And on the surface, it looked very black oriented. I mean, 98% of the patrons were black. Uh, the promoter was black, the DJs were black, the people who were behind the bar were black, the security was black, the people who were taking the tickets were black, the people who were selling the tickets were black. And yeah, so on the surface, it looked like a black event. But then if we were thinking about um, the black code, that would mean that the person who was renting out the venue would be black. The person who was printing would be back. The person who was doing the flyers would be back. The person who owned the, um, the 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 drinks and the alcohol would be black. You know what I mean? So, but what happens in this situation? You've got all these black people in one place, and the venue is owned, I think, by Asian people, and they get thousands for renting out the venue for one night. You know, I don't know who they get their drinks from, but it's probably um, a non-black off-license or whoever they've got a business deal with. And, you know, and but the one good thing about that, about the rave, is that it shows that black people can organise and get groups together or get a lot of people together. And that means in order to do that, you must know that there is a common interest. In, in, the, um, in a rave situation, the common interest is nostalgia, bringing back the days of old, reliving those times when you used to dance, you know, against the wall and the Shubin days and, you know, hugging up and winding up or whatever it is we do at those raves. That's what, that is the common interest a lot of the time. Sometimes it's to meet someone. You're hoping you're going to meet somebody down there. Sometimes it's just to listen to the music. There, people have different, motiva different motives for going to these raves. But the fact of the matter is you've got somebody who is organising it, somebody who is financing it, somebody who's doing the accounts, somebody who's managing um, to make sure that everything fits together. To, to make it a success. They've got to agree dates, they've got to agree prices, they've got to agree, um, what else do they have to agree? Dates, prices, venue, those are the main things that they have to agree on. And then they bring it to a success. Now suppose they could extend that business acumen because that is what it is to other areas of their lives. Now what Claude um, Anderson is saying is that 
that's how, you know, there should be a code of conduct in the home, whether it's um, the time you have meals together, the days you decide you're going to spend time together, the days that are planned for it, the times that are planned for education, for work, for play, for learning, um, that kind of stuff. Um, the time, you know, there should be a code, a man code, um, that he maintains his masculinity, that he protects his spouse and his children, that he he is productive, you know, that he is creative, that he encourages his children. And then you have the family code where you don't betray your family under any circumstances, that you protect them, that you don't try to trick them or get one over on them. If you borrow from your family member, you make sure you pay it back, that you put your people first. And what he's saying is, is that if um, if there was a penalty for people who didn't do those kind of things, like in the mafia, if they if they cross if they cross the mafia, mate, you find them in a ditch. I mean, the thing is, he reckons that you need a wealth base in order to do that, so that there, so that there are reward consequences and there is punishment consequences. But he was also talking about how to um, raise the children and how to teach them about stocks and bonds, how to teach, you know, have a special education system, whether it's to teach them give them additional teaching at home or have Saturday schools to teach them about home, home buying as opposed to renting and telling them the advantages, um, to teach them about how to start a company, about entrepreneurship, that kind of thing. And he was also saying there's no excuse because you've got a home university with YouTube and Google that can help you um, where you don't have the information and you can go over that with your children and teach them. And he's saying you need to teach your child all of this stuff before the age of 12. So it led me to thinking that, you know, we do have the ability to um, structure our lives so that it is better. But because we don't, because our lives aren't structured, that's why they, they're, they're unfocused. And that's why we're all over the place, a lot of us. So it is about, you know, taking serious interest in your family, in your spouse, protecting them, making sure they don't come to no harm wherever possible. With your children, it's about when they come home and they have their homework and they and you say to them, have you done your homework? And they say, yes, mom. You say, well, bring it and let me see it then. Don't just take their word for it and go through the homework with it. Make sure it's right. If you're not clued up, literal, you know, with your literacy, I'm sure you can find somebody who can at least help in that area. So you don't have to feel uncomfortable. Or you can even go on Google together or YouTube to find to make sure that the answers that your son or your daughter has put on the paper are correct. It's also about when they say when you say to them, have you tidied up your room? And they say, yes, mom, you go and check the room. You don't just take their word for it because they're going to say anything so they can use the Xbox or go on the phone. And the reward would be, OK, you can go on your phone for an hour, but you double check, you get involved when you tell them to go and read a book. A lot of times when kids want to do something, they need an incentive so that they've, there's something to motivate them. So you can incentivize them by you know, saying, OK, you can get this if you read this book and you can explain to me um, your understanding of it. And you don't just, you know, when they come down and try to explain the understanding of it, you don't just shove them off and say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You pay, you pay attention. You ask questions. You have a dialogue going on so that they know you're interested. And you can kind of have a trade off. So you're actually benefiting your child. He's learning why and you're benefiting by giving him something or giving her something that they want or that they need. And so there's a win win situation there. And that's what we should be doing with our children to give them some kind of um, understanding about what there is, the opportunities that are in the outside world. You know, we're not taught how to buy homes. You know, and it's not hard to teach. You know, we're not taught how to make comp to um, 
build our own companies. And the forms are relatively easy to complete. And there's always a YouTube video to show you. So these are the kind of things that you need to be teaching young children, especially under the age of 12, so that when they go out of the world, they have a heads up because you can't rely on the schools. They've just got too many pupils in the classroom and your, in, your child is just a number. You know, they cannot cope with all the children in the class. So it's about having that kind of moral um, structure in place. And so once you've got once you've got that and then you're thinking about the finance, their financial acumen, what can you teach them about finances? This is where you start telling them about stocks and bonds. And once again, you don't need to know anything about it, but you can sit with them and have a look and say, what kind of things are you interested in? Go on Google, go on YouTube and check it out. But your child must have an understanding about these things. You know, and those are the kind of um, things I'm talking about. When you're thinking about a charter, a community charter, it is about um, the being a man, being a family member, being loyal, putting your community first, supporting your community first. If you and the thing is, a lot of people think, oh, well, I can't do nothing. You need money. I ain't got no money. But do you know how many funding streams there are? They've got funding for all different things. If you've got an imagination and you have a creative mind and you can think of a project that can help other people and put people in jobs, there's funding for it. And there's also somebody to help you complete the funding forms. I mean, I was given £10,000 to um, do a project for human trafficking. I've never had £10,000 in my hand in that way to manage on behalf of someone else. Um, I'd never had to do this mile to, to create milestones and project manage and get companies to assist. It was such a successful project. I didn't know anything about it. But, you know, I the first thing I did was to find a company who did, who was an expert in human trafficking. And I solicited their help. And then with them, we kind of... Um, networked with the police, we networked with the border force, we networked with the hospitals, we networked with Samaritans, Red Cross, um, oh, so many organisations and it was a success. It was the first inauguration um, event in, in Bedfordshire to do with human trafficking. And I had the, you know, I was proud of that. I was able to account for the funds. I mean, Finances is not my thing. But, you know, if you account, if you make sure you document all the money you're spending and all the money that's, you, you know, you've got the money that's come in and you just document every single penny you spend and you just, uh, you know, just take it off of the total. And yes, it's an arduous process. And sometimes you buy something and then you forget and you're like, oh, where did I put the receipt? You just have to be organised. And I'm not saying that it's an easy thing to do, but you can do it if you're disciplined and you're focused. So all I'm saying is that, you know, in order for black people to get somewhere in this world and overcome the obstacles, it is about trying to do things for themselves and looking after each other and supporting each other wherever they can. I mean, that is the main thing. If you if you can start up a, a community interest company through the funding, that's well, you have to have the community interest company first and then and then you get the funding. But you can set one up easily enough. There's plenty of people out there to help you. The forms are relatively simple. I think the prices have gone up now. It might not be so easy to do a community interest company now, but you can do a, a public limited company fairly easily. And yeah, once you've got that and you know, you know what area you're going to go in, these funding streams are so helpful. And that's how a lot of people have got off of the ground and started their own businesses. They can even employ people. So you can actually facilitate other people um, to get on board, you have training and you have your little, um, you know, it, the world is your oyster. You can even start up a Saturday school, whatever it is, as long as you have the mind to help other people 
and you're helping yourself and you're helping the government as well. It's a win-win situation. So I was just putting it out there, you know, um, about the charter. I, I don't think I put it over here because uh, you've got the rules. Um, the main family rules are that uh, you define the rules of the home, you show love and support to your family members, you protect siblings and family members no matter what, you never betray, trick or exploit or steal from your family because a lot of stuff starts from home. You know what they say, charity begins at home. If you start looking, if you can look after your family, everybody looks after their family. You're really dealing with the whole community in that way because every, every family member is a part of the community. Um, you never abuse or sell out a member of your family. You get so many people who are wishing you sell out people for a buck. You know what I mean? You have to stop doing that. Um, pay debts to relatives on time. You know, sometimes you have um, family members who are going to who loan you money and you think, oh, it's a family member, I'm not going to bother giving it back. Show loyalty, show trustworthiness to family members. Put them, make them important, they're a priority. And don't say bad anything bad about black people, even if they deserve it. Just keep your mouth shut. My mother always said to me, if you can't say anything good, don't say anything at all. And that will stop the hatred as well. Because, I mean, a lot of people talk about white people hating black people, but you've got a lot of black people that hate black people. And you can tell it just by their, their words and their mouths. So, yeah, so you've got to, you've got to be real in this. Um... Yeah, you've got your home rules, you've got your dinner time, you, you encourage punctuality, you've got time for work, learning, play and rest. You've got to teach common sense to your children. It's not just enough to tell them about academics. They need to have common sense. They need to have street sense. You know, that's a very important. And yeah, I was saying get involved in the Google, in the home university, which is Google and YouTube. You must share time talk to each other, spend time over dinner once a week where you actually involve and you're really interesting and what interested in what other people got to say. The man rules, protect your masculinity, protect your spouse, protect your partner or children, be productive physically and mentally. Educate your children about the street, I just said that. Um, yeah, what to teach your child before they reach 12. Encourage educational excellence. Reward them for being smart, sticking to the rules and for hard work. Show them how, tell them how to buy a home, how to invest in stocks and bonds and how to be an entrepreneur. So I think I've done an automatic and they have to have, you know, encourage creative thinking. You know, there's lots of things you can do, puzzles, mind mapping. There's lots of things you can do to encourage creativity. Um, yeah, and, you know, they can teach them how to do um, community interest. I mean, I can think of lots and lots of things, but the main thing is to get a structure in place. Children are lost without boundaries. They need boundaries. They need discipline. When you leave them to their own devices and let them play on their phones and their Xboxes or whatever it is, they feel uncared for. You think that they feel happy with their phones and their thing, but they don't. They want that discipline. They want that interest. They want to know that you're interested in them. And by allowing them to just do what they want, that extends to them into adulthood and they just become listless and aimless and they have no goals and no no. Um, business acumen so it is important to get them let you know show them interest and be interested in them and I know it's hard when you're working and some of you have got two jobs and the money is not coming in and you're tired but you know you've brought these children into the world and a lot of them are going on the streets and are doing some crazy things because they feel neglected the children are the next the children are the next generation they are the people who can make a difference and they can only make a difference if you set the foundation and the foundation is the charter the community charter all those things i've just spoken about so i hope that this is helpful and you know it just it's just a kind of a stepping stone to how we can change things if we think differently and that's all for now bye bye